Hey there guys, this is Android Review Guy. Um, I wanted to bring you guys a little tutorial today on the Samsung Galaxy Mega no touch screen issue after the 4.4.4 update. Um, this goes with all varieties of the Mega besides the i317 which is the AT&T version. So any other versions unlocked, anything like that, this will work on. And the only reason that it won't work on the i317 is because there's no recovery I hear up for that ROM, or for that phone. Excuse me. So, yeah. So, um, if you're watching this video, you clearly know what I'm talking about because I've read in many, many forums about how this is such a big issue and everything like that. And to be completely honest with you, it is a big issue. I mean, I, the only whole reason why I decided to do the video is because it happened to me as well. And I actually got lucky and stumbled onto a fix for it. So, and I have not seen any other people that have been able to fix this or anything like that so I am officially the first person to probably post a video about this on YouTube so here we go so anyways what I'm talking about here is clearly the 4.4.4 update with a no touch screen now and apparently this is due because apparently if your screen was replaced with a non OEM screen then some for some reason the 4.4.4 update will not take to this phone and um, this also could be the case for the 4.4.2. All I know is I was updating to the 4.4.4, and this is actually the Metro PCS M819N or something like that. Samsung Galaxy Mega, which is fully unlocked. I was using it on Family Mobile before I did the update. So, anyways, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. First of all, once you have updated, you're, you'll, you'll realize that you won't be able to connect this phone to the computer. It won't do shit, pretty much. So it's pretty much just a turd right now. It won't touch, won't connect to the computer, won't do anything. So the first thing you need to do is do a hard reset. If you don't know how to do that, I will put a link to the instructions in the description here, there. As long as any other kind of files that you will need, you can find them in the, in the description as well. So anyways... After you've done the factory data reset and everything like that, you'll pop up on this screen. Touch screen still won't work. You'll still be pretty pissed off. And then you'll plug it into the computer. You'll let it pop up. And then you'll, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download Odin 307 Super User Update, which is this one here. Um, Torp, which is the 2.705, which you can get from Selish Nair, I believe is what his name is on XDA. But um, I'll put a link to his whole deal over there. And then you'll need to download this ROM right here called Megafire MJ2 V16. Okay, this is what's going to fix our phone right here. Okay, and then the next thing you're going to want to do is download um, Phil's Touch. And I'll put a link to all that too. So we'll need all these files right here. Here's the Odin Super User Update Twerp Megafire ROM that I was talking about. And Phil's Touch, I think I actually scrolled out of the way because I was looking at the computer. Um, okay. But we're going to need to drag some of these over to the phone. So the first thing that we're going to need to drag over the phone is going to be the twerp. Okay. We're going to drag it over, drop it into the phone, let it do its thing. Okay, so that's twerp. Next thing we're going to need to do is drag over the updated super user. Okay, drop it in there as well. That was a quick one. Okay, and then the last thing that we need to bring over there is the mega fire. Okay, so we'll take it. Drag it over there. This one will take a few seconds to copy, so I'm going to pause it until it's done. Okay, guys, I'm back. I also want to mention as well, when you do go to download this ROM here, the Megafire one right here, you're going to want to make sure that it, in fact, is the, um, the V16. Because if it's not the V16, then... Um, it won't work. I've tried them all. I've tried all variations of this ROM, and this is the only one for some reason that works. It was the very first one that I actually, you know, decided to choose, which was weird. I got super lucky on the whole situation and everything, but yeah, that was that was the case or whatnot. So, anyway, so mind me, I gotta exit out of some of this crap here. Come on. I don't know why it's not. Sorry about that guys, my computer spazzes out sometimes, so anyways, okay, so the next thing we need to do after we've copied all that stuff over to our SD card over there onto the phone, not even your SD card, it's just the internal storage, so don't, I know a lot of people get mixed up, I've watched a lot of 
ROMs being put onto phones and everything and people get confused about SD card and internal storage. It does not matter. If you want to put it on your SD card, you can put it on your SD card. If you want to put it on your internal storage, and put it on your internal storage. I always put everything on my internal storage because half the time the recovery recoveries for phones and everything like the external storage hardly ever works. So I always use internal storage anyways. Okay, so anything. Anyways, what we need to do now is clearly we need to exit out that and we need to open up the Odin 307 folder. Okay. Once that's open, we need to actually open that up, give it permission, okay? It's all booted up and everything we got, everything we need to do. Next we need to do is click PDA, okay? Once you click the PDA, you need to find your fills. We'll go to your desktop or wherever you have your downloads folder at or whatnot, and you need to click the fills touch. That's going to be your new recovery. Now, a lot of people probably will be scared about this because it's going to void your warranty, but the Meg is old as hell. So I don't know why you'd even have a warranty anyways. And now you know with the 4.4 um, stock operating system and everything, it has the Knox bootloader. And you're not technically supposed to be able to put a recovery on there or else it'll lock up your phone and all kinds of craziness. Well, for some reason, the Mega will let you do it. And I am living proof of that, and I am about to show you. So anyways, to load that up on there, now you're going to want to put your phone into download mode. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, in order to put your phone into download mode, you're going to unplug that, pull the battery, put the battery back in, and you're going to want to hold a volume down. Hold on, let me get a better view here. Okay, so you're going to want to hold volume down, home, and power all at the same time. As soon as you see it pop up on the screen in the top left-hand corner, and... Nope, never mind, that's something different. Okay, so once we're in this, press continue. Okay, and you're going to want to take your USB cord again and plug it in and then we'll go back to the screen here set the phone off to the side okay as you look here as soon as it shows in blue there hold on let's see if I can get it to focus that it's connected there you're going to want to go down to start leave everything else alone okay let's start let it do its thing it's flashing, it's flashing down there, it's flashing. Once it says reset, you're good. So now the next thing you're going to want to do here, we're done with the computer. Completely, completely done with the computer. The rest of this to get your phone back working is all done through the phone, and I'm about to show you. Here we go. Okay. Mega's booting up, but we don't need that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the battery out. You unplug your charger. I'm gonna have to plug it back in because my battery is clearly dead. Um, put that it back in, and then you're gonna want to do the same thing, the same way we did it did to get it into download mode. But this is gonna be recovery. So instead of volume down, we're going to be holding volume up plus home plus power. Now, once you see the little blue um, booting into recovery mode pop up right there at the top, see that, and it's gonna say Knox warrant or set warranty bit recovery. Okay, it's gonna boot you into the fills touch thing recovery here. So just keep holding it. You need to let go of the power button though over here as soon as you see that that little thing up there. Okay. Now we're going to boot up. We're going to be into here. So what we're going to want to do is go to install zip. Okay. And then we're going to do choose zip from SD card. Should be the first one that you're on. Click it. Okay. Now where we dropped everything here we're going to want to do the twerp, okay? So click twerp, install twerp. Once that's done, it'll say continue down here, and then just press back. Okay, next we're going to do is go to power options, and then reboot recovery right here. And then it'll say apply root. It doesn't really matter because we're about to really flash the real root. But next, now we'll boot into um, into Twerp here, which is way better recovery in my opinion. I've done, I've used every recovery that's ever been out since the original HTC G1, and I like Twerp better than anything. So, okay. So then we're gonna go to install, slide all the way down, and then this one right here is the update super user. We're gonna click that, swipe it. It's gonna do its thing. We're gonna go back. Okay. 
and then now I accidentally put the ROM that we're about to flash in the wrong spot. So I'm going to pause this and put it on the phone, and then I'll be right back.